Pressure temperature phase diagrams. This is lecture part three. Okay, so let's just remind ourselves of our list of major types of phase transitions. So we are going to actually see these on the phase diagram and get a better understanding of what each one is. But the list here, we went through it earlier, melting, which is solid to liquid, evaporation or vaporization, liquid to vapor, sublimation, solid to vapor, condensation, vapor to liquid, freezing, sometimes called solidification, liquid to solid, and deposition, vapor to solid. So most of these you've probably heard before, but deposition and sublimation might be a little bit new. All right, now pressure temperature phase diagrams are extremely handy. They summarize in a graphic form all the information about the phase of a substance under various pressure and temperature conditions. And so you can look at a phase diagram, look at where you are under the temperature pressure conditions that you have and decide and look and basically determine what phase your substance should be in under those conditions. Okay. So here's a general pressure temperature phase diagram, and it's a very simple one. All right, so we always we are going to have the pressure on the x-axis, and our pressure on this one is in atmosphere, but it can also be in torr, bar, and other pressure units. On the x-axis, we have temperature. Right now, we're in degrees C, but you'll also see Kelvin. And then we have the diagram divided into three segments. Okay, so we're going to talk about those three segments and what those lines mean. Okay, so generally under high pressure conditions and low temperatures, so you can see where we are, we're going to have solid present. Okay, so those are the conditions that favor a solid. Vapor is favored at high temperatures and low external pressures. So remember, this is the pressure pushing down on our substance. So at low external pressures, we are more likely to have a vapor. And so vapor is favored. As we go up in temperature, it's even more favored. And then liquid is going to be intermediate. So interme intermediate conditions of temperature and pressure. Here are our phase transitions. So freezing is along this line, OK? So liquid going to solid, that's freezing. Melting is the solid going to the liquid. And so this is sometimes called the melting line or the freezing line or the liquid solid coexistence line, okay, on the phase diagram. Now this line right here, it describes that phase boundary between solid and vapor. And this is the solid vapor coexistence line. So deposition is when we have a vapor going to a solid and sublimation is when we have a solid going directly to a vapor. Now this line, believe it or not, you've actually seen it before. This is that liquid vapor coexistence line that we saw on our vapor pressure diagram. So vaporization is when we have a liquid going to a vapor and condensation is when we have a vapor condensing into a liquid. All right, now on this diagram, there's a very special place called the triple point. And this is the one place that all three phases coexist at the same time. So if you're at this exact pressure and temperature of the triple point, all three phases are present in equilibrium, and they just stay there as long as you're under those conditions. That's called the triple point. Now. When we're at one atmosphere, that's a very common external pressure because, of course, that's atmospheric pressure, okay? So if we take our dotted line and we go over to the solid liquid line and also to the liquid vapor line, and then we drop down, straight down from there, we're going to get two very special temperatures. And one is the melting point, the so-called normal melting point and the boiling point, the so-called normal boiling point. So those are under atmospheric conditions, what we usually consider to be the melting point or the boiling point of a substance. Now the critical point is another interesting point. 
So this is way up here at very, very high pressures and temperatures. And at this point, and again, it's only one pressure and one temperature, at that exact point, we are at this critical point. And this is, if we go past this point on the phase diagram, then we can no longer distinguish the liquid and the vapor phases. So we would call it a supercritical fluid phase. So beyond that point, beyond that critical pressure and critical temperature, we can no longer distinguish the liquid and vapor phases. All right, so another important part of the diagram is the slope of the solid liquid line. And you can see that the dependence on pressure is pretty weak, but when we have a positive slope, which is what we have here, that indicates that our solid is more dense than our liquid, okay? And that's most substances. Most substances, the solid is more dense than the liquid. Now water is an exception. And so water has a negative slope for the solid liquid line. And so that tells us that the solid is less dense than the liquid. And when we think about that hexagonal crystal structure for ice and all of that empty space that is in there, that is trapped in there, then we can see how the solid could be less dense than the liquid in this particular case of water. Okay, so just a quick summary. So phase diagrams graphically summarize all of our phase information and solids generally exist under low temperatures and high pressure conditions. The vapor phase is present under low pressure and high temperature conditions. And liquids, of course, exist under in intermediate temperatures and pressures. Now the triple point is the one pressure and one temperature where all three phases are in coexistence. The critical temperature and pressure is the point where once we go past that, at that point and once we go past it, we can no longer distinguish the vapor and liquid phases. There's a weak dependence on pressure of the solid liquid coexistence line and a positive slope indicates that the solid is more dense than the liquid and this is the normal situation except for water the solid liquid coexistence line is negative meaning the solid is less dense than the liquid.